gonna be a walk around of a CT660 cat truck. It's got a water tank on it. These are the front sprayers. Independently controlled. Battery box there. Air tanks. That'd be for a <coughs> fire hose, but it's not on there. It's a ground force water tank, probably around 3,500 gallons. It's got two independent rear spray nozzles and a drop bar. Valve doesn't close all the way on that. Fill it off the fire hydrant with that tube. Off the back. This side sprayer nozzle, it's got an air cylinder on it to adjust the angle up or down. It's run by a switch in the cab. Um, got our water pump right there. I believe you can self load these trucks if you leave a little bit of water in the tank. Pull this valve up, shut it off, hook a suction hose here and kick your pump on and it'll pull water into this one. And there should be another valve somewhere you open to where it'll push it into the tank. Yeah, this, this valve here, you open this one and it pushes it through this hose into the tank. It'll self-load itself without having a hydrant or uh, another water pump sitting there. And then you would, when you're done, you close this valve, open that one back up for normal operation. Pull the hood up. Got a Cat CT13 engine in it, uh, tier 4 emissions. Lots of electrical parts. You can hardly see the engines in these things anymore. Um, here's the engine oil dipstick, transmission dipstick. This has a 6 speed automatic in it. This is the power steering fluid reservoir. There's the coolant tank. <coughs> air cleaner in this box. This engine has compound turbos, smaller one on top there, bigger one on the bottom. Also notice that it has two air-to-air -air intercoolers on it. It's got this one in here that comes off with a small turbo. 
comes back around into the big turbo. And then into another air cooler up on the front side of the radiator there. Or windshield washer fluid in this reservoir. Cab. Extremely nice interior on these trucks. It's about like driving a pickup. You don't even feel like you're in a truck. These are all the adjustments on the seat. This one is up and down. This one is the sides of the bottom of the seat. We'll be putting air in these edges here. This one is for side support on the back lower, middle, and upper lumbar supports. This here adjusts the angle on the seat back. Um, this one, like I said, has an automatic transmission in it. So you got a brake pedal, accelerator, ignition switch down there. Here's our turn signal lever, it's got the wipers on it, um, dimmer switch, just push in and out on that. Over here you got a heated mirror switch, uh, park request, that is to clean out the DPF, you just bump the RPMs on the engine up to about 1700 RPM, run a regen cycle on it. Dome light switch. Uh, these down here are all your axle locks. That's the inner axle lock. Just basically a diff lock ties, turns both differentials, and then you can independently lock each axle so all four or both sides of the axle are spinning. This switch here is for the PTO to run the water pump. Not sure what this switch is for. It appears to be something to do with the axle lock. Well, up here we got a cruise control. Set. Uh, resume. Excel. Hazard lights. Got a radio. Uh, XM ready. Bluetooth. It's got a USB port and an auxiliary port somewhere on it. Maybe it's just the got that USB jack in it, but uh need your marker lights on that switch. Over here on this panel got all of our spray controls. The dump bar in the back, this black one here is for raising and lowering the side sprayer. Those two are your two front sprayers. And then the three up on top there. For your two rear sprayers and your side sprayer. Down here we got our transmission controls. Reverse, neutral, drive. These buttons here select your, your gear up or down if you want it to hold in a lower gear than six. And. Cluster up here, two on the right are air pressures for your brakes, uh, fuel gauge, alternator gauge. 